نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى وقد ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واغفظ لهما جناح الظل من الرحمة وقل رب رحمهما كما رب يعني صغيرة صدق الله العظيم Dear brothers and sisters Life is incomplete obviously without the family members A person, every person wants to spend a very happy life, a satisfied life and that is impossible for us without having good terms and good, good, good relations with the people around us and the most important people in our life is none other than our family members and you know in the family it starts from our parents so because we want to spend a tormented life, a happy life, a satisfied life so it's a very important thing for them to maintain a very healthy, good and friendly relationship with our parents Nowadays this relationship has become difficult because you know because the life is too busy parents especially father being is busy in his business and his activities we remain busy in our education and uh, other activities besides that you know because of the social media there are other barriers among the relationship sometimes we sit on the same table but even then we don't don't talk to our parents in the way we should do that so what is the guidance of Islam regarding this issue? How can we maintain good terms with our parents? And what are the rights of parents? First of all, we need to know that. As Quran provides solutions of all the problems, similarly the Quran gives us the best guidance how to maintain terms and relations with the family members. The verses which I recited in my khutbah are the best verses in the Holy Quran regarding the rights of parents in which Allah has said وَقَدَ رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدِينِ إِحْسَانًا Being the student of the Holy Quran, you should know that in the Holy Quran, the verses are related to each other. Every next verse has some connection with the previous verse. Every next surah has some connection with the previous surah. It is known as Nazmul Quran, the relationship of the ayat and the relationship between the surahs. So these verses are starting after a few other verses in which Allah talked about Iman, what is Iman and how do we have to believe in the oneness and unity of God and what are the requirements of faith. But from these ayat Allah has informed us about the requirements of faith. After calling us ourselves believers, what do we have to do, what are the requirements of Iman, these things are mentioned in these ayat. And there is a verse in the previous ruku in which Allah said, that whoever wants to get the high ranks in Jannah and whoever does something to get those high ranks we are definitely going to give him the high ranks but what are the efforts or Akhira? what are the actions we need to do for a successful Akhira? Allah has mentioned those things in this ayah and one of the very important things to get high ranks in Jannah is to maintain the good terms with your parents in this ayah, first of all, Allah said, Baqada Rabbuka illa ta'abudu. The word Baqada in the Holy Quran means that Allah has decreed it. Allah has, it, it's a command, it is not subjected to abrogation. You know that some of the commands in the Holy Quran were abrogated by Allah with the passage of time. But whenever the Holy Quran uses the word Baqada, it means that this command is not subjected to abrogation. It will remain so in the same way till Qiyana. So Allah has said that Allah has decreed upon mankind that they will not worship but one and only God. So Allah started this ayah with the oneness of Allah and with the worship of Allah. You know that ibadah means to give extreme respect to someone. And who deserves extreme respect? The one who has given you the most of the things in their life. And he is none other than Allah who gave us life and who gave us all the bounties in our life that we are enjoying. So obviously no one else deserves more respect than God and that respect of Allah has to be shown through our ibadah. But right after that Allah has mentioned the rights of parents and right after that Allah said وَبِلْ وَالِبِهِ إِحْسَانًا That we had to do good with your parents. Why Allah has mentioned right after his right the parents' rights? Because you know that there are two 
reasons of our presence, of our existence in this world. The first reason and the main reason, we can call it the habibi of our presence in this world, is none other than Allah. He gave us life, so obviously Allah deserves that respect, so ibadah. But the second reason of our existence in this world is none other than our parents. That's why the parents also need that respect which Allah is mentioning over here. Besides that, we can also say that parents deserve no respect because Allah has used the word Rabba or Allah Rabbuka Allah Ta'abudu. And what does Rabb mean? Rabb is one who provides all necessities of life. The Rabb is one who upbrings us and who nurtures us. That's why Allah deserves that ibadah. But after Allah, who nurtures us? After Allah, who is there? Who teaches us and brings us and provides all the necessities of life and we are too young, none other than parents. So that's why if someone deserves any respect after God, so they are none other than our parents who deserve this respect. That's why Allah has mentioned the rights of parents right after his own rights. And in this ayat, Allah has mentioned that Imma Yabu and Kilahuma if you find any one of them or both of them in their old age, in their advanced age, why Allah has mentioned the old age over there? Because as long as we are children and we are so much dependent on our parents, we respect them because we know that they are the only provider of everything to us. But when the parents become very old and when they need our support, at that time the children start thinking about them as burden. There are many cases in our society that people are so unfortunate that they have old parents but the children are fighting with each other that who will take the responsibility of these parents. The parents brought up six, seven, eight children at the same time but when they became old, but when they became old, the children, they want to give that responsibility to them. Everyone says that I am not the only child of these parents. They did not bring me up only. So this is something very unfortunate that the Holy Quran and the Sunnah is saying that the parents are jannah for you and we are throwing them to other people, that, uh, to other sisters and to other brothers that you should also take the responsibility. So over here Allah has given us a few commands regarding parents. We can list them, we can say that there are five commands which Allah has given to us in these Ayat. First of all, Allah said, Fala taqullahuma uff. You know that this is a very small word which is used by us at the time when we dislike something. When we consider something a burden at that time, the people say uff. So that's why, and the Mufassirin say that there is no other simpler word, there is no other smallest word, otherwise Allah would have used that in the Holy Quran. Sometimes the parents are giving you some advice and uh, they are calling you for something and you just say, oh, why they are calling me and why they are saying same thing again and again to me. So if there are wrinkles on your forehead and if you are using some kind of it, it's not only of any other word which you are using which shows your uh, disliking of something, which shows your disrespect or displeasure that will be considered as disobedience of the parents. That's why the Holy Quran says that you have to go to that level of respect in your parents that you must not use even a word of oof. And you should remember that when you were a child, you used to do the same mistake again and again. But they never disliked us. They always liked us. They even smiled on our mistakes. We asked the same thing again and again and they replied to the same answer again and again. And even then they considered us gift from God. But when the parents ask something to us, we start considering them a burden, which is not the character of a true believer. So that's why there should be nothing in your words, in your action, which shows any kind of displeasure from the parents. This is a requirement, first of all. Secondly, Walat and her Do not scold them. Sometimes when the parents become too old and when they become dependent on you, so we increase our volume in, in, when we are talking to them. Sometimes uh, you, you people are teenagers, sometimes when you dislike something and uh, you increase your volume in your front of your, especially mothers because they are too polite. So which is totally forbidden and which is totally haram unless saying walat and haruma, you must not raise your voice in front of them, do not scold them. 
And some of the Mufassirin say that Wala Tanharhuma over here he said you should not start arguments with them. You should not say that you don't know, I know. Like nowadays the new generation say that you have no idea what is going on in the world but we know better than you so be quiet and I know better. So this is totally a disrespect of your parents and you should, if you think that your parents are not giving you a reasonable uh, kind of argument in some kind of issue, so then you should remain silent on it or you should just ignore it but you have no right to try to show that you know better than him or you are better in your logic or in your reasoning in something than them because they brought you up, they deserve that respect. So you should use low volume with them and we should not start arguments with them even though we know that they are not giving us some valid or reasonable argument. And وَقُلَّهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And it means that and talk to them in an honorable way. Say to them some honorable words. Whenever we talk to the parents, we should use the good words for them. Holy Prophet peace be upon him didn't allow to talk to the parents with their names. Even in their absence, if you are talking about your parents, you should not call them with their names. And we are talking to your parents, you should use the words of respect. Your style should be of the style of respect because we are talking to your parents. This is the command in the Quran. Karima, that you should be using the honorable words with your parents whenever you interact with them. And after that, the Holy Quran gave the third and uh, the fourth command, Waqfiz Rahuma Jana Azulli. Waqfiz means that lower for them, Jana Azulli. Jana means the wings, and Zul means humility. You should lower for them the wings of humility. What does it mean? Look, the wings are, no, we don't have the wings, we have arms, but the birds have wings. But when they lower their wings, the birds lower their wings when they want to protect their offspring. They take care of his spring in their wings, they load their wings for them. So similarly, Allah is using that phrase over here that as your parents took you in your arms to protect them with love and with care, similarly when they became old and when they need your support and your services, you should also load your arms for them. You should also take them in your arms with love and with care and to protect them from all other kind of things. And the fifth thing which Allah is saying, وَقُلْ رَبِّرْ حَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرَ That we should also pray for our parents. One thing he said, we should keep our parents always in our prayers. And this is the prayer which the Holy Quran has taught, رَبِّرْ حَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرَ We have to memorize it and keep it in our prayers always. O oh Allah, show mercy to my parents and they show mercy to me when I was here. We should not forget our childhood and we should keep in mind how they were kind and how they were uh, giving time to me and how they were taking care of all of my needs when I was young. So it is a time when I have to compensate. You people are the age of uh, 16, 17 years. Now you have become enough mature to take the responsibility of your things. You should keep in your mind that parents have done enough services for you. Now it is your turn that at least you should not become a burden for your parents. Instead you should ask them that if you can help them in any kind of thing, you can help your mother in some kind of things in the kitchen, you can help your father in some kind of things. So this is the time to return instead of becoming burden always on your parents. So that's why over here we should also keep them in the prayers. In the prayer, we also pray, you know, Rabbi Jalani Mukima Salati Wamin Zuriyati Rabbana Wa Taqabbal Dua Rabbana Wa Firli Wa Liwali Taya Wa Lil Mu'minina Ya Wa Yaqoom Al Hisa So that is also a prayer which every Muslim does in his Salah. So parents should also keep in their mind that if they want their children to pray for them even after they are there, so they should teach them the Islamic teachings. If they need their children regular in their prayers, if they need their children uh, to learn the du'as which are given in the Holy Quran, so obviously the children will also be praying for them with the same du'a. So this is the du'a given over here which we should always keep in our prayers. And after that Allah is saying that رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ Sometimes it happens that we don't intend to disrespect our parents, but somehow we say some words, sometimes we raise our voice, sometimes we start arguments with our parents, and sometimes we disobey and we ignore the advice given to us by the parents. Sometimes it happens. Though 
in our heart there is no intention of disrespecting them. So what happens at that time that you did not intend but something wrong happened. So Allah is saying that there is no need to be worried about it because Allah knows the intentions. Allah knows what is there in your heart. Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. In Tadmuno Salimin, if you are really obedient to your parents, if you really want to respect them and obey them, and sometimes you have done something wrong, so ask Allah for the forgiveness. So in the Kana al Awabina wa Fura. Awameen means that the people who return and go back to Allah again and again and they seek forgiveness from God. So it happens many times in our life that we realize after we have done something wrong, after using some wrong words to the parents, after committing disobedience to the parents, then we realize that we had not to do that. So after that, what should you do? First of all, you should seek forgiveness from your parents and then you should forgiveness from Allah also and Allah is promising that Allah is there to forgive you. So these are the things in this verse Allah has mentioned and there is another verse in Surah Luqman in which Allah has mentioned about the rights of parents. Over there Allah has said that be kind to your parents. His mother bore him with sufferings and delivered him with sufferings. You know that both the parents are given equal rights. Both of them are to be respected or to be obeyed. But you know it's a very famous hadith that once a person came to Holy Prophet peace be upon him and he asked him who deserves my best treatment. So Holy Prophet said your mother. He said then he said your mother. He said then he said your mother. And fourth time he asked then. Then Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, now your father. So mother is giving three times higher rank than father. What is the reason behind it? Allah has mentioned in the Quran repeatedly, because his mother both bore him with sufferings and delivered him with sufferings. The sacrifices which a mother gives in giving birth, in the bringing and feeding of the children, obviously father's sacrifices cannot be compared with the sacrifices of mothers, there are many more sacrifices. It is 24 7 job for mother that she has to attend the children. If it's 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and the whole family is sleeping and the child is sleeping, who will attend the child? None other than mother. Whatever the weather is, whatever the condition of mother is, but she is there to sacrifice her sleep, to sacrifice her comforts for the children. So how bad it will be when you become strong enough and you become taller than your mother, you start arguments with her and you start ignoring all the sacrifices that she has given to you for your life. So that's why Allah is reminding us, don't forget the sacrifices your parents give for you. One thing is that. Besides that, in the Holy Quran there is a verse in Surah An'am in which Allah has mentioned some of the things which Allah said that you must not do that. In which Allah said, قُلْ تَعَالَ وَأَتْرُ مَحَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْهَا Then there are certain things you must not do and Allah said you must not do shirk and then Allah said you must not kill any uh, innocent person, you must not commit adultery. But in that verse where Allah was listing all the things in nahi form, in the, in the form that you don't have to do these things, in the center of that verse, Allah said, O Bil Walidini Hisana. That is not a negative sentence, it's a positive sentence. But you have to do this thing, O Bil Walidini Hisana, to highlight that thing. In the list of forbidden things, Allah has mentioned an affirmative sentence, a positive sentence, that you have to do this to highlight the importance of the rights of parents over there. And in the wordings, you see that Wabil Wali Daini Ihsana, the word Ihsan comes later. Let's not say the two Ihsan with your parents. Wabil Wali Daini with your parents do Ihsan. None other than deserves more Ihsan from you than your parents. Sometimes, the age uh, in which you are passing through the teenagers, sometimes what happens is that uh, the friends' logic, the friends' requirements become more important than parents' advice. The friends are calling you for a party and then the mother or father is not giving you that permission. So you start hating them or disliking them that they don't want my social life or they are killing my social life. They don't want me to enjoy my life. So that is not the correct thing. The most deserving, the people who are most sincere with you, the people who love you the most sincerely, none other than parents. So we must not think that they are saying something or giving some advice, they are against us, that is not. We should take it positively. Whatever they say, whatever they command you, that is for your own benefit obviously. 
there, there are a lot of literature in the hadith of the Holy Prophet, which we have on, in which highlights and how, what is the position of parents and how do we have to behave to our parents. You know the companions of the Holy Prophet, which we have on him, they loved Jannah, they wanted to achieve paradise in all cases, they were ready to sacrifice their life, they were ready to sacrifice everything, but they wanted high ranks, high rewards and paradise. And that's why they wanted to participate in jihad. So, you know, there is a famous companion of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Hazrat Abu Hayyadah And Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered Muslims to get ready for Khyber expedition. So, Hazrat Abu Hayyadah had an old mother. He said that I am going with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to participate in jihad. I cannot escape this high reward of jihad. His mother reminded him that I am only, you are the only one to take care of me. On whom you are leaving me here. But Abu Huraira wanted to get the reward of jihad, so he decided to go with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. So, Mother of Abu Huraira came to Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and informed him about the situation. So, when Abu Huraira came in the gathering of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, did not talk to him. He ignored him. And the companions, and the, the, they observed it obviously, uh, that Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, what is the behavior, what is the action, what is the reaction of the Holy Prophet, this way upon him and he saw me. When Abu Raira noticed that Holy Prophet is ignoring me, he came, Ya Rasulullah, what, what wrong I have done, why are you ignoring me, you are not giving me that, uh, that politeness, that importance which you used to give me. So then Holy Prophet, this way upon him, informed me that how can you plan to go for jihad when your old mother is waiting for you and he is looking for your services. And Holy Prophet, this way upon him, Informed Abu Huraira, don't you think that you are in the way of Allah? Do you think that you are in the way of Allah only when you are going for jihad? No. If you are serving your mother, you are keeping her happy with your services, you are in the way of Allah. You are like a haji, you are like a person who is performing umrah, you are like a person who jihad. Don't underestimate it. You are living a very comfortable life in your houses and you are just taking care of your mother, you are just taking care of your father in anything, in their medication, in their food, in anything, you are helping them and you are respecting them. You are doing such a great thing, you are getting the reward of jihad. A companion came to Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give me the permission for hijrah, and I have left my parents, and they are weeping, but I have to do hijrah like all the companions. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, did not allow him. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, asking, Az hik huma, kama ab gaita huma, go back, and Make them happy and make them laugh as you made them weep. That is your Jannah and you are not allowed to do anything in which your parents are not supporting you. They don't like that thing. And Holy Prophet peace be upon him, it's a famous hadith. Holy Prophet peace be upon him once came to the mosque and Holy Prophet was climbing up the pulpit. On every step Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, Ameen, Ameen and Ameen. So the companions used to observe the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, very closely. So the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, we noticed something very strange today. Why you said Ameen on every step? Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Angel Gibraltar made three prayers, and I said Ameen on all of them. And one of them was that, be destroyed that person. Because that person who found his parents in their old age, and even then he failed to achieve paradise. The paradise was in his house with him. The old parents are like Jannah. They, uh, they were with him, but even then he did not serve them and he did not achieve paradise for serving them. So that person deserves to be destroyed. Such, a, such an easy thing he did not do for his paradise. And Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, the literature is full of such events also which encourage us to be good with our parents. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, informed his companions about the story of three people who were traveling and in a rainy night they took refuge in a cave and a rock came down and got fixed on the mouth of that cave and they could not move that rock so they said we should pray we should ask Allah we should remind the good we have done in our life and we should ask Allah for that good deed please give us way out of this cave and one of them said that I was a shepherd but it was my habit that whenever I used to come back with my goat first of all I used to give milk to my mother and after that anyone else in my family could drink that 
So I brought them in a the bowl to my mother in front of it. Found my mother that she was sleeping. So I did not wake her up. I did not like it. Can you imagine that? Our mothers are saying something, do this thing, and we many times we ignore them. But that person was standing with a bowl of milk and he did not even like to ask the mother to wake up and take this milk. He stood over there near the bed and he said, when she will rise, I will give the milk to her. And she continued sleeping and almost the whole night passed. He did not move from there and he did not wake her up in respect. So if Allah liked my service or my mother, this obedience, this obedience which I gave to my mother, if Allah liked it, please give us a way out of it and Allah made the way out of it. The good which you do with your parents is rewarded, multiplied. No other good deed will be multiplied so heavily by Allah as the good you will do with your parents. <coughs> multiplied returns are given. And whatever we do with our parents, we see the results within this life. All other things are result, maybe Allah will show them in this world, but may Allah will show them in Akhira, but the good and bad done with the parents, the results are always visible in this world. The people who do good with their parents, the rewards in the form of the blessings from Allah, they see it within the world. And the bad they do with their parents, they will see the result within this world as well. Believe that our punishments in Akhira is another thing. It will be there. But within this world, Allah show the results of the good we do with our parents. And the punishments are also given in this world if we do bad with our parents. So these are the things which Holy Prophet peace be upon him said. Holy Prophet peace be upon him himself did not get time, did not get an opportunity to serve the parents. You know, the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was born as an orphan. His father died two months before his birth. And he was only six years when his mother, Amina, also passed away. But it's a famous saying of Holy Prophet peace be upon him that if I would be in the prayer and my mother would call me during my prayer, so I would break my prayer to listen to my mother. I would be that obedient to my mother. So the Holy Prophet peace be upon him explained us to what extent we have to go in the obedience of our parents. Similarly, Holy Prophet peace be upon him had a name, you know, Ome Amen. Holy Prophet peace be upon him got her as inheritance when Hazrat uh, Amna died. She brought Holy Prophet peace be upon him back to Makkah also. And she brought the Holy Prophet peace be upon him up and served him when he was a child. So when Holy Prophet peace be upon him became the messenger of Allah, once she said to Holy Prophet peace be upon him, can you please give me a glass of water? So Hazrat Aisha said, you are asking the messenger of Allah to give a water to you. So she said, though he is a messenger of Allah, but he is just like my son because I brought him up. And Holy Prophet peace be upon him ran and brought water for her and said, why not? I am your son, I am just like your son. And the Prophet was very happy in serving her, though she was not the real mother of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, but she was the maid of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. But Holy Prophet peace be upon him taught us to reply a good behavior of someone's, the best behavior. We can never return the good which the parents have done to us. It is also a famous service of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that one of the person was having his mother on his shoulders and he was performing tawaf. And he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that I helped my mother to perform that on my shoulders. Have I done my job? Help a day to Hakkaha? Have I given? Return compensated the good which my mother had done to me. Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, La la suffering wahida, not even a deep breath. A deep breath. Mothers do a lot of work for the children, and sometimes they sit and they take a deep breath. When they get tired. You did not compensate even when deep breath what your mother has done for you, what you are thinking. It's impossible for us to return. Because look. Whatever the mothers and the parents do for us, it is for no return. They don't expect any return from us. It is, it is only the culture we have in Pakistan that we are sometimes in some of the families the parents think their children are their retirement plan and they will become old and they will be earning and they will be spending. But parents, most of the parents don't think like that. And it is not a good thinking. Whatever the parents do, they do it just in the, for that love which Allah has created in their hearts from God. So, but when we are going to serve them, within a few months, within a few years, we start thinking that it is too difficult for us. 
and we start considering them a burden. There are many stories in our own societies where everything is there in the house but the parents are sent to the old houses. They consider them as a burden in the house where these people are very misfortunate people because it is their jannah which they have thrown away into the old houses. The parents who are expecting that the children will be obedient to them, they should also think that have they given the rights to the children also a lot. Though it's not my main topic today, the main topic was the rights of parents. But when we talk about relations, you know, relations become better only when both the parties are playing their role properly. There are some mistakes which the parents also do in the bringing of the children, and as a result, they didn't get that obedience from the children. For example, they had to maintain equality among their, all the children. Sometimes it happens in the same family that if one person, is one child is very intelligent and he's getting good results, so he is praised again and again, and there is a child who is not performing that well in the studies, so they start criticizing them. When you are doing one thing for one child and you are not doing the same thing for the other child, so obviously how can you expect from that child who was ignored by you that he will be doing good to you? Because he you knows that I have no value in this house, in this family, I am always ignored. So how can we expect that he will be doing good to us? So the first of all, the parents have to maintain equality in the, in the treatment of all the children. One of the companions came to Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, Ya Rasulullah, I have a slave, and I want to gift this slave to one of my sons. Holy Prophet said, we have other sons? He said, yes. And the Holy Prophet asked, you are gifting one slave to all the children? He said, no, I have one slave, but I like this child, I want to give this slave to this child. The Holy Prophet said, sorry, I cannot bear witness on injustice. This is injustice you are doing among your children, I cannot do that. Similarly, the parents do mistake when they use bad words on their children, when they get angry, calling them different kind of words, you are a donkey, you are lying, and you are so deferred, you are so dumb, like that. It is obviously everyone has a self-respect and everyone wants to be respect. If we want our children to respect us, obviously we have to teach them how? By giving respect to them. When we respect them in return, we will be given respect by our children. We want our children to be polite and to, to be so loving and caring, but how can they be if we did not maintain good relations among the spouses? If the husband and wife are always fighting with each other and the environment of the house is full of chaos and panic, so how can in that environment a child learn to love other people? How can he learn to respect? Such children, obviously, their personality got damaged and they don't get peace in their houses so they want to get out of it and they want to find out that peace in their friends and in the other societies. So it's a parent's mistake that they made them like that. Similarly, the parents, sometimes the parents impose their commands on their children for no valid reason. The parents should be, they should be just like God, they should be just like a good advisor, they should give good suggestions, they should benefit their young children with their experiences, but they should not impose their will on them if their children want to do something lawful, something halal. You should not impose that no, you will never do that. For example, in the case of marriages, it usually happens in our society that if a person wants to marry in some place, but the family is and parents are insisting, for no reason, no, you cannot do this marriage outside this family, and you have to do the marriage in this particular circle also. Where is it written in the Quran and Sunnah? Parents are not given the license to do all these kind of things. And after that, to fulfill their ego, they do that, and after that, they blackmail also by quoting the verses of the Quran. Don't you know what is written in the Quran? And you are not listening to me. And even sometime after the marriage, there are cases, there is, there is a person, he says that I have got engaged three times, but my mother always go to the family and there is something, fight, and my engagement is uh, over there. So sometime, in some of the families, they don't want their children to get married and they want them to continue earning and they want to enjoy on their money. Obviously, that is not the uh, thing that the parents should do. Similarly, after the marriage, they should not interfere in the life of the dear couple if they are doing something. There are many, there are many families in which the parents are using their authority in a wrong way and they have destroyed the family in this way. The mother-in-law, she is demanding her son to do 
the two will treat the wife and the son is listening. Look, there are limits. I have given a, a long lecture on the obedience of parents and the respect of parents. I have quoted so many verses in the ayah also. But at the same time, there is a verse in the Holy Quran in which Allah has limited the authority of the parents. If they are asking you to do something haram, if they are asking you to do some kind of shit, if they are asking you to violate someone's rights, like a mother is demanding the child to violate the rights of wife. So at that time, when it's clear that they are pushing me to something unlawful, to something unjust, you don't have to disrespect them even at that time. Treat them nicely, politely, but you should not follow that wrong command. You should not follow that wrong command. So they deserve to be respected, they deserve to be obeyed as long as they are asking something within the limits of Sharia. Otherwise, we don't have to obey anyone when something is coming in contradiction with the commands of Allah. May Allah uh, make us obedient to our parents and make uh, Allah give us a true understanding of the teachings of the Holy Quran. And may Allah make our services or our parents our way to Jannah. Wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillah.